Hello, welcome back, turn 36. Uh, first things first, let's just get this out of the way. Last turn, I set up an incredible defense of three provinces, and none of them were attacked, okay? There was no fight in any of these provinces at all. None, zero, alright? So, I'm, I'm bad at predicting enemy movements, alright? This is what we've learned from every game I've played. I'm really, really bad at it. So, we're just gonna get that out of the way first. Alright, nice. Now that that's said, let's get on. So first of all, research and construction was completed. Uh, we're actually 9 in RP from uh, level 3 as well. So this gives us lesser magic items. I don't think there's anything too interesting there. At level 4 we get the first boosters that are useful to us. There are two uh, boosters at level 4 and one death booster, I think. Uh, so that's where we'll probably stop for a while. So we'll just stay on construction for now. Um, lots of cloud trapezes again. Dark knowledge, no sights. I should definitely stop casting that, but I won't. Uh, precision Excision cast Seeking Arrow. And we hit, but we did not kill anybody, unfortunately. So our test run of Seeking Arrow, I guess, was a fluke. Because it barely did any damage this time. But lesson learned. Uh, nurse Search for Sights, but none were found. Then we had a battle in Belcoria. So, there were three things, uh, four things I did last turn, if you remember. I defended Honoria, I defended Rusty Badlands, I defended Gilgud. Uh, none of those provinces were attacked. I also moved all my troops from Miklen to Bakoria. Um, in the process, totally overlooking the fact that Agartha could have just attacked Miklen, which he did. But, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't think he would. Um, which is weird, because, like, I remember mentioning just how weak Micklin's fort is, like, it's so easy to take as well. You would have thought that maybe I would have been smart enough to leave some units defending it, but nope. Um, but I did move some units into Belcoria, and we caught the units that were in there originally. Um, what I think happened is that Agartha moved some units from the Green Sink to Micklin, and then also moved the units from Belcoria to Micklin. But whenever you have uh, armies from adjacent provinces moving like through each other, it's like a coin flip for who actually attacks and who defends. And I think I won the coin flip, so I attacked, and his units were forced to just stay in Belcoria, and um, we attacked them. So that's what happened there. Um, so, I was scripted to fight a big army, but instead all I fought was the little army. Uh, which means, as you can probably guess, I totally crushed this little army. Massively overprepared for it. Lots of skeletons, lots of air elementals, and everything just gets annihilated. Which is fine, you know, I'm not going to complain about annihilating everything, but um, definitely overkill. But like I said, I, I don't think um, I was expecting to fight, fight the uh, much larger army. But we did c catch these guys, so we also kill all of these worms, thankfully. So I do not like them at all. Um, so we lost one Median warrior, but um, Agartha lost all of his troops, and one of his mages as well, this little en engraver, died. Um, so, you know, small victory. We spent a lot of gems on that fight, and it wasn't what we wanted, but it was still a victory. Um, next was a battle in the Caves of Madness, so I was correct, he did attack the cave next. I think he wants the cave provinces. Fortunately, I have a, an army moving up to take the um, provinces behind him as he moves, uh, so that's fine. What I'm really hoping, he has, uh, he attacked me in Silverham as well, which I'll get to. Well, I guess I'll talk about that when I talk about that. But for now, I'm just going to take Searing Sands. Uh, and I'm also firing some more Seeking Arrows at this army, because hopefully I can take it out. Um, so Caves of Madness, not a very interesting fight. We've seen these units, they're all the crap units, uh, plus a few Sacreds. Fighting three points of PD, so obviously he just walks over them. Next was a battle in Silverham. Uh, this is a unit we haven't seen before. Might be a hero. I haven't actually right-clicked it yet. Or maybe not. Maybe it's just... It's just a big mage. Uh, so this goes Water 1, Earth 4, Holy 3. So that's quite nice. And he has a ton of Earth Gems, actually. So I'm glad I noticed that. So he can probably cast Earthquake. Yeah, and he just did cast Earthquake. That's interesting. I haven't watched the fight yet. So that cost him three gems. He cast Earthquake on turn one. I'm surprised that he cast that against Province Defense. 
Um, huh. Well, now we know what that army does. I hope that doesn't kill my Nemedian warriors if we fight them there. I do have some flying units, but I also have a commander. The commander might die. 15 hit points. I'm going to watch that again. Let's just see how much damage Earthquake actually does. So, Militia have 10 hit points. 10 hit points. These guys all have 10 hit points. The champion has 13. So, alright, Earthquake didn't do that much damage. I'll have to look up how much damage Earthquake can do, because that's like, Earthquake's one of those really terrifying spells that can just like obliterate half an army with one cast. So we'll have to be careful about that. Um, but for now... For, um, can you cast Mist Form? It won't matter anyway, will it? Because... I'll be on the offensive. So he'll get turn 1 movement. Um, I don't know, my troops have a lot of hit points. 15 and 14. The Earthquake only hit for 12 at the most, is what it looked like. So let's assume that we can survive an earthquake with m with our commander at least, and the army in Sering Sands will be okay. Um, let's just let's assume that, and let's can, let's yeah let's stick with that movement. All right. So anyway, he's, he's got an earthquake mage. Uh, next, apparently I put no province defense into the fortress at Micklin, which is a real shame because we don't get to see his army now. Uh, and in fact, the entrance to Micklin is also breached in one turn. So he has about 50 units here, um, storming the fort, and they'll be able to actually take it next turn. So that's unfortunate for us, but we can take it back quite easily, uh, assuming everything goes okay. Battle in Belmar, this was this province. Uh, this was a province that I was a uh, just attacking with a scout. I thought I might be able to, if it was undefended, I thought I might be able to uh, def you know, take it if he forgot to put province defense into it. Um, Unfortunately for me, of course, he moved some Great Alms into the province, and Great Alms, as we've seen, have 100 range, 100 precision, so he dies instantly. There's no escape from that. Uh, but it, it did let us know how many um, how many troops were in this province now. So it was actually quite useful to us. So we know that his god is here, uh, and we know that his god is leading all of these units. Magma children are... I don't know, they're not that scary, I don't think. And Pearl One Warriors are pretty bad, but the Great Arms, of course, are quite scary, and there's 19 of them, backed up by his god, so that's kind of tough. Uh, and finally, there was a battle in Welyrd. Um Let's check this out, because there's some more un new units here. This was a sort of middle province that he hadn't taken yet. So we've got these guys, Living Mercuries. They look like water elementals, but... Um, but they're not. <laughs> they're surrounded by poisonous clouds. But they're really cool looking. This guy doesn't have any gems, that's nice. He does have some earth boots though. And he summons earth power. And he casts Horde of Skeletons, alright. Alright. Uh, unexpected event in the hole. Yep, I was correct. You do get attacked after the satyr is caught. Um, but it wasn't vine men, it was uh, centaurs. An unexpected event in the woods of weeping. 260 people left. So battle in the hole. Uh, we got beaten by centaurs and satyrs. Uh, so we've lost it again. But we would have lost it anyway to Agartha next turn. Uh, Engines to Micklin has been breached. And we also got another hero. So, this is another cool hero. Brez the Uncursed. Earth 3, Death 1, Nature 2, Holy 2. He's got 4 points of awe. Sacred. Sailing and Gift of Water Breathing. Uh, pretty nice. He's not quite as good as his dad, Baller, but uh, he's still pretty nice. One thing I, I forgot to uh, check about these heroes was how much they can lead. And apparently these guys are sick leaders. Brez can lead up to four squads with plus two morale. 
And um, Baller, in fact, is even better. Where's he? Check this shit out. Plus three morale for five squads. That's nuts. So these guys are amazing leaders. Uh, I should probably give the Nemedian Warriors to Baller, actually. I might do that later. Um, was that it for messages? Yeah, that was it for messages. Okay. So what's happening this turn? Right. In Fomoria, Precision, Excision, and Bress are casting Seeking Arrows at the Caves of Madness. We really want to kill these commanders just to stall this army. Um, it would be really annoying if we don't kill them. Uh, and meanwhile, Jawbreaker is heading to Searing Sands to take that province back. We might fight this Earthquake Mage. I kind of hope we do. I think we'll live it. I, I really do. Um, and ten of my units are flying and they will just fuck up those guys. So I really hope he attacks the Searing Sands next, or moves to it. Um, he has absolutely no reason to move to Searing Sands next, but you know, he, he might do it. I think he'll probably take Stinging Swamp. Uh, and then he might be heading into the cave to build a lab. Like I think maybe Agartha wants to build a, a fort and a lab and stuff in the cave province. I'm just guessing though, I, I have no idea. Um, but, you know. It's hard to predict what people are going to do. But, uh, yeah. So we're moving to Searing Sands. Down here is a much more difficult question. Because I have no idea what he's going to do with this army. So, I'm moving this stack of units to Belmont. I'm moving this stack of units to Belcoria. And I'm moving this stack of units to Micklin. Uh And the army in Belcoria is moving to Belmont. So... Uh, I don't know. This is this is a mess. It could go in many different directions. If the army in Belmont moves backwards, that's fine. I can't do anything about that. He might sit there and move these units up and just defend, in which case I attack with two armies. He might move towards Anoria, in which case it's a coin flip what province it's in. Uh, and hopefully it's in this province because then he gets attacked by two armies. He could move up, in which case there's no fight at all. He could move all of the units from Belmont and Micklin into Balkoria. That's possible, because he might think that the units in Belkura are all I have, because, again, it's hard for him to know how many units I have because they all have Glamour, so he can't see them on the map, I don't think. Um, Furbolgs have Glamour, right? Oh, they don't. Okay, so he can see the Furbolgs, but he has no idea how many uh, Nemedian Warriors I have around, or Nemedian Sorceresses, for that matter. He can't see any of the Nemedian Sorceresses in these provinces. Or the Nemedian Warriors. So he has no idea really how big these armies are. He has a rough idea, but not a good one. From his perspective, the army in Balkoria has no military units, it's just commanders. In fact, it's just the giants, right? Because everything else has glamour? Yeah. So he has sort of imperfect information, so I don't know what he'll do, actually. And it's kind of hard to guess, so... This, uh, this, this set of actions, I think, covers my, the most of my bases. Um, but I, I really don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Um, totally unnecessary drilling is going out on his own to the green sink as well. Uh, my dominion is in this province, so if I die it doesn't matter because he's immortal. So, might as well try and solo cap it. Uh, and that's actually it for this turn. So, kind of an odd turn. It's really hard for me to deal with all of these multiple armies at once. Because um, I'm really, really bad at predicting enemy movements to begin with, and when there's lots of armies and they can move in lots of different ways, uh, it's pretty tough. But I would really like to catch his Pretender. Because that's that Pretender is one of those things, like, it's going to be really difficult to kill it. Um, if it gets away and just starts solo capping provinces, there's nothing I can do, because I can't I can't just cloud repeat some mages onto it and expect to win. I don't think I will. Hmm. Anyway, that's it for this turn. Eight commanders doing nothing. What are they? Let's see. One, two. They can. St yeah, these. Those scouts can stay there. Uh, those scouts can stay there because they can't do anything. Yeah. All right. We'll. Uh, just make sure my medium warriors are moving, not uh, sorceresses are moving, not sneaking. Okay. So we'll end the turn there, and we'll just see what happens on turn 37. Um, hopefully we have a fight and I win it. That, that would be the best possible outcome. But uh, who knows?
Welcome back to turn 37. Uh, I'm not feeling very, feeling very well today. Uh, I'm a bit under the weather. So, I, um, uh, I don't have a lot of energy. <laughs> and uh, you'd be surprised at how much energy it takes to get through a turn in this game, especially when you're at war. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, focus, actually. Um, but by the time you watch this, I'll either be better, or I'll be dead, I guess, if it turns out to be fatal, whatever's wrong with me. Uh, so that's nice. Anyway, construction, we hit construction 3. Uh, get us legions of steel, that's quite a nice little spell. AoE 25 armor buff. Sure, why not? Um, but we want level 4, for the construction of greater magic items. That allows us to forge uh, an air booster and a death booster. Uh, they're very expensive, those items to forge, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure the Bag of Wind or whatever is like 30 air gems. But it's a very nice item, so... You get what you pay for, as they say. After that, I think I'm going to put my points into enchantment to deal with Earthquake. Uh, because there's a great spell in enchantment called Mass Flight. It only requires Earth 4 to cast and 2 air gems. And it grants flight to every single friendly unit on the battlefield. Which, in addition to being great in its own right, also renders you immune to Earthquakes. Uh, and as you will see this turn, we take a lot of damage from Earthquake. So, having some immunity to that seems like a nice idea. Uh, it will take us quite a while to get there, unfortunately. Uh, it will require, as you can see, 1300 more research just to hit Research 6, and we need Research 7. Um, but once again, you get what you pay for, <laughs> so... We'll pay a lot of uh, time, and we'll get a great spell. So there you go. Uh, speaking of uh, getting what you pay for, we cast Dark Knowledge like 30 times this game and found nothing. So actually, you don't get what you pay for. Uh, <laughs> unless, well... You know, I, I, I think I'm going to stop casting Dark Knowledge finally. I've decided to give up on Dark Knowledge. It has cost me too many gems, and I now have better use for Earth Gems. So there we go. If I find a few more death sites, naturally, I might start casting this again, just with one mage every turn. But we'll see. Bress and Precision Excision both cast Seeking Arrow. It says we hit something, but did we kill anything? I don't know. Uh, we can see on the map that this army is actually still in the Caves of Madness. So it is possible that it didn't move last turn because it lost all of its commanders. It's also possible it didn't move this turn because he started building a fort here. I don't know. Um, I guess we'll find out. Next there was a battle in Miklan. That's quite interesting. Uh, if you remember, we moved a sizable force onto Miklan because it was under siege. Uh, but the fort was already broken. So, let's see how that went, shall we? Um, so as you can see, this wasn't a very big army for us. It was mostly just furbogs backed up by, you know, quite a few mages. We can see we've got like six furbogs there. Four sorceresses. Um versus uh, a pretty nasty looking chunk of Great Alms with some Magma Children, Earth Elementals. So, let's see how this goes, shall we? Our Great Eagle guys are all paralyzed immediately, but we get off a storm. And we get off an Earth Elemental or two or three. Some Magma Bolts fly in. Uh, my sorceresses start casting mist form. There's a pretty big blade wind getting cast every turn by uh, one of those. What are they called? Uh, Earth Reader. And as you can see, all of our furbogs rout, but fortunately, we don't need conventional troops. We have skeleton spam. Hooray! And, uh, eventually we just kind of brute force our way through that line of troops, and uh, all that's left is the, uh, the alms. And we get to kill quite a few of those, as you can see. So I think that was quite a nice result for us. Um, we did lose a Philbog Druid, and we did lose half of our Philbog Warriors, but the Philbog Warriors, of course, are very, very cheap. Uh, in fact, every unit we had in this battle was extremely cheap, with the possible exception of a Great Eagles. Um, so all it really cost us was a, a druid, 
And we cost Agartha quite a lot of... I, I can only assume these are quite expensive units. The Magma Children, the Great Arms, the Ancient Ones. Um, the Great Arms especially, I'm, I'm quite pleased that we, we killed so many of. So we took back Miklan. Hooray! We don't have to repurchase the fort, uh, the um, temple. Next was a battle in Searing Sands. That was just my uh, Nemedian champion taking back this province. Uh, nothing too interesting there. Uh, battle in Stinging Swamp. This was um, this is an important fight to catch actually. If you remember, this is just the small group of sacreds backed up by this guy. As we can see, he has three Earth Gems remaining. And does he cast Earthquake? You bet he casts Earthquake. So as far as I can tell now, he now have n has no Earth Gems. He could have a stealthy unit with him, carrying more gems. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that he is now out of Earth Gems and cannot Earthquake any longer. So um, Stinging Swamp, as far as I'm concerned, safe to attack. He can't Earthquake me. Um, Battling Green Sink, that's over here. Um, I can't remember what this fight was. Let's just check quickly. <laughs> Re refresh my memory. Um, oh right, this was drilling. Solo attacking this province. Assuming that would only be PD in it. And there was only PD in it. And drilling, as you can see, is pretty incredible at killing PD. Nice work, drilling. Um, then there was a battle in Gilgud. Can't remember what this one was either. This was... Oh, Agartha attacked me with a scout. Alright. I'll go over all these fights um, once we're looking at the map again, but I just want to go through them together now. Um, so he attacked Gilgu with a scout, expecting it to be undefended, but it, I did remember to put PD into it. On the other hand, I attacked Silverhelm with a scout, expecting it to be undefended, and it was undefended. So we actually cap captured Silverhelm back with a scout. So good work, us. Battle in Ferra. Uh, this was the Grey Knights. Yes. Unfortunately, the Grey Knights took another province from us. Um, I asked how to deal with this. Apparently, this is very, very difficult to deal with. Uh, for reasons I'll explain in a moment. And then there was a battle in Belmar. Where our big army managed to catch... Dun dun dun! His god with nine Earth Gems. Which is pretty terrifying. Um, and a lot of Great Elms, actually, as well. Uh, but we had a gigantic force. We, we caught him with the bulk of our forces, which is exactly what we wanted. So let's put this on turbo and see how it goes. First of all, right, turn one, before we get to turbo. Turn one, that's Earthquake. That is a lot of damage, actually. Uh, you see all those red numbers right throughout the battlefield. The unfortunate thing for us is that our Sorceress, who was scripted to cast um, Storm, actually dies from the Earthquake. I don't know if it's that Earthquake. Well, it must be, because she was scripted to cast it on turn one. So, yeah, she dies. So we don't get a storm off in this fight. Um, yeah, it's pretty brutal as you can see the earthquakes. Um, but we do only get hit by two earthquakes, I believe. And lo lots of our units are out, they can't handle that earthquake bullshit. But the rest of our troops? Pretty good. And there are a lot of them, as you can see. And here it comes. Yay. We killed his god. So I think that's fantastic. I think that's a really great result, actually. Um, so how, what did that cost us? Well, we did lose two sorceresses, unfortunately. Uh, we lost a scout, apparently. I can't... I must have had a scout in that province and I control clicked. Because the sorceresses are, are stealthy, so you always have to uh, control click when you issue move orders. Otherwise they sneak. So I guess I also missed a scout. Uh, we lost the adventurer, who was the free commander we got, who we named Snake Eater, <laughs> which uh, bore fruit apparently. And we lost one druid. And we lost a couple of Fulbog warriors and a couple of Medium warriors as well. 48 units in total. But he lost about the same number of units, and he lost his god. So I think that's a pretty decent result actually. So that was a lot of fights to go through. This will be a long turn unfortunately. Um, but they were all quite interesting. And then in Spire Woods, I love Spire Woods, what a great province. Unexpected event. The people here have raised a temple in honour of their god. So we just got ourselves... In this province we've had 15 free province defence and now a temple. 
So, Spire Woods, uh, top province. It even has two sites. What a great province. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so that's a really nice event for us. We also scout in uh, Copper Woods. Uh, apparently, lots of patrolling going on in Copper Woods. So that's <laughs> interesting. And we lost one Furbolg to disease. Okay, so what are we doing this turn? Uh, yeah. It's not the easiest turn to go through in terms of movements. This whole area is a spaghetti junction of bullshit at the moment. So let's come back to that. Let's let's look over here first of all. So, uh, do I really want to do this? At the moment, I'm assuming that I killed all of the commanders in Caves of Madness. I'm assuming that there are no commanders here, meaning that this um, army is not going to go anywhere. I'm assuming that I can safely leave it there. That's why I'm moving away. Because I can deal with it at my leisure, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I don't know if that's a good idea or not, now that I think about it. Caves of Madness is a really nice province. Yeah, let's take Caves of Madness, actually. This is a 96 income province, so if we take this, that's a 96 income swing from Agatha to me. So, let's actually attack that province. Uh, and take it. Okay. So we're attacking Caves of Madness with um, the Jawbreaker uh, and his um, nice little army. So we should take that back. As a bit of insurance, we are casting one more Seeking Arrow at the Caves of Madness with Precision Excision to just make sure that everything, all the commanders here are dead. Um, and as you can see, because we scout capped Silverham last turn, these two provinces are actually isolated. So as long as we can knock both of these provinces out this turn, neither of these guys have anywhere to retreat to either. So this is just a total death if they lose these provinces this turn. So we're attacking Caves of Madness. Hopefully it doesn't move because it has no commanders. Hopefully we, we take it quite easily. Other thing we're doing is casting a lot of Cloud Trapezes. Uh, we have three guys casting Cloud Trapeze in this province. Uh, winning Small, Medical Ethics, and Health Insurance. Uh, they're just set up to mostly cast um, Horde of Skeleton sp Spam. Uh, and also our Sorceress over here is also casting Cloud Trapeze. And they are all, all four of them are class casting Cloud Trapeze on Stinging Swamp. So the reason they're doing that is because, of course, the ritual phase takes place before the movement phase, so um, they'll be guaranteed to fight the units in this province. And if you'll recall, the mage in this province no longer has Earthquake, as far as I can tell. So it's literally just that mage plus seven units and whatever province defense is here. So I think f four of my mages can take out seven units, one mage, and some PD. I think so, anyway. So we're, we'll be attacking these two provinces next turn. Hopefully we'll take them both, and hopefully we'll wipe absolutely everything in these two provinces, because they have nowhere to retreat to. Over here is a nightmare. Um, I'm attacking Pharaoh with one sorceress just to try and, try and take it back. I have a problem with these, these um, Grey Knights now, because I can't intercept them. Seeking Arrow doesn't hit stealthy units, so I can't try to Seeking Arrow the um, the leader. And if I Cloud, trape cloud Trapeze into the province, um, these units will already count as hiding again, so I won't actually fight them. I, I can't like intercept them with Cloud Trapeze, I will only fight the province defense if I Cloud Trapeze in. So there's not much point actually Cloud Trapezing in. I might as well just, you know, slow cap it. So next turn I'm moving in um, Extreme Bleaching. She's got two full boys with her. She'll just skelly spam. Uh, what's her death score? She's only death two. She does have an earth gem in her inventory, apparently. Uh, she was the one mage who routed from the uh, the snake killing fight. But uh, she'll attack for her. Hopefully it'll be undefended, or it'll just have a few points of PD. Um, and we'll just we'll cap it back immediately. But we cannot intercept these stealth guys. The only way to do it is to be patrolling in a province that they move to, and we, you know, we catch them and we do it that way, but that's, that is not going to happen, I don't think. I don't have anything around here that I can patrol with a group of mages. Um, the exception, of course, is Kazdipol, which has 36 points of PD. So if he moves to Kazdipol, we might reveal him. So it might be worth stacking some mages there, just as a sort of, you know... Problem with that is, of course, that he'll then be able to see all of the mages in Kazdipol and probably won't move into it. So, again, I'm sort of, um, not sure how to deal with these, this stealth army. 
The rest of these units are just moving around to pick up the uh, furlogs that routed. There's seven here that's going to be picked up by Baller. Um, there's a few here being picked up by Stray Commanders, a few here. Um, a few ma These mages here are just moving to Miklum. Uh, we need. We don't have a lot of units in this area anymore. Is the problem? Most of our units are in Belmar. These guys. This is. This is pretty much it. These um, Nemedian warriors and these Philbogs are basically my entire army. So, those guys can move on. Everything else needs to consolidate, though. So lots of mages are just moving back to Miklun. Uh My pretender and drilling will be moving around solo capping stuff. Uh, I feel quite safe using those two to solo cap. Uh, Baller might get in on the solo capping as well, and so might Bress, in fact. Well, well, Medical Ethics, as he's now known. This guy, with a few items, this guy would be pretty beastly as a thug. Um, all four is pretty magnificent. I think that's the word I just saw, wasn't it? This truly magnificent, yeah. Um, so those guys might be able to solo cap, We can, and we can slowly put together um, some more units over here. Uh, problem with Miklin is of course is that it's garbage in terms of resources. It's a swamp province with no resources, so recruitment here is tough. I have to recruit over here, pretty much. Um, so the the major movement is my army in Belmar. That's moving to Asandius. Drilling is moving to Wellard, since that province has my dominion, so it doesn't matter if he dies. Uh, and my pretender is moving to the Green Sink. So these three provinces will be the provinces where I have major forces next turn. Everything else is just picking up units or reconsolidating or their scouts, as you can see, stuff like that. Um, but on that turn, uh, due to the fights that we won, we pretty much wiped Agartha's um, initial sort of strike force. If we clean up these two provinces as well, that's it for his sort of uh, aggressive military units. Um, we can begin the counterattack in earnest. With our first, um, our first point of attack will probably be Haunted Woods. Um, we found Ermor as well. Ermor's over here, so that would be a really nice province to attack as well. And it is very close to us too. Um, unfortunately, there's no direct route. We'd have to go through... See what I mean? To get from there, we'd have to go through the throne. Or go this route. Or um, we could just walk across Haunted Woods, I suppose. Um, that would be quite interesting. Next time we'll have a scout in Ermor so we can see exactly what's there. But, uh, we'll see. Um, I hope that's enough detail. That This is just a confusing mess at the moment, but in the next few turns, we'll, uh... We'll, we'll hopefully be, um... We'll have a clearer picture of what's going on. So I think that's everything. Um, let's just check my research. I didn't... No, I didn't move anything else. Um... I notice that this this throne is down. It says the report now says ten enemy units. I don't know if if uh, Rilia is doing something here. He is building um, Ichthids. Maybe he's planning on attacking it. I really don't know. Um, yeah, but I'm quite pleased with this turn. Agartha is huge, as you can see. We found his um, his western border over here. Agartha is gigantic, huge. Um, Yeah, I'm going to end the turn there. Uh, I might have missed some things because I, I am feeling a bit under the weather. Uh, I hope I don't sound too... Um, uh, I know I sound quite dour to begin with, but if I'm sick I really sound fucking suicidal. Uh, <laughs> so I hope, <laughs> I hope that's bearable. I'm going to submit a partial turn, just in case I want to come back to it. Um, but that's pretty much everything, I think. And I'll see you on turn 38, where hopefully I feel a bit better. Thanks for watching. Hello. Another turn. Um, it's very late and I'm very tired and I may actually be dying. But, let's get on with it, shall we? Uh, research and construction was completed. That gives us a few boosters. Uh, which is fine for now. Uh, we really want enchantment up to uh, mass flight. And we want conjuration up to Living Clouds and Dance of the Morrigans. So there are our next big targets. Um, I'll show off the items as I forge them, but I don't think I'm forging anything just yet. Uh, cast a lot of Cloud Trapezes to intercept those handful of units. And another Seeking Arrow. Uh, it turns out we already did kill
kill both commanders, and if there was nothing there to hit this time. Uh, but you know, it was just insurance, just in case. Uh, okay, Battle and Stinging Swamp. Let's show that one. So these were the units that we cloud trapezed in to catch the Earthquake Mage. And the question we had was, did he have any more gems? Did he have maybe a scout nearby with some gems for him? No, he didn't. So this was nice and safe. So we just have our few units here. Uh, taking out his few units there. Uh, with minimal difficulty as you can see. Board of Skeletons, pretty good. Pretty good spell. Absolutely no danger whatsoever. Uh, and nurse searched muscle for spite. Um, nurse, nurse searched muscle for, for sight and didn't find any. Uh, yeah. Battling the Caves of Madness as well. So this army had no commander of course, but the commander from the last fight retreated and retreated into this province, so he's he's still here. Um, quite a lot of PD in this province as well, that's what these guys are, these are the uh, PD for this province. So he was obviously quite eager to defend this cave, but we took it from him. You can see my Springhawks there doing some lightnings, and my Morrigans are in the fray as well. Um, so those two battles went very easily. Uh, we didn't really have any casualties. We had um, we lost three Spring Hawks and we lost two Numidian Warriors. Um, and he lost the um, the Oracle, of course, because it had nowhere to retreat to, and all of the units in both provinces. So these two provinces are now back in our hands. Uh, and we can look towards moving down towards uh, more now. Battling of Sandius. Uh, this was um, a Gotha attacking into us, which I was not actually anticipating, and I was not really set up to deal with this very well. And first of all, the earthquake hits. That did quite a lot of damage. That killed a sorceress. Then there's Iron Bane. That's the big red thing over the map. Uh, this destroys weapons. Oh, armor rather. Um, rusty armor. Rusty armor. So what rusty armor does is whenever you get hit you lose all of your protection. Um, so that's quite a nasty spell actually. Uh, we all class flight to deal with future earthquakes but uh, I don't think there are any. Huge blade wind. And um, I don't know if you caught that. You can just about make out the numbers on the video there, but there's a pretty gigantic spell that gets uh, cast against us in this battle called Magma, er Magma Eruption. Um, and it basically just takes a huge chunk out of our army every time it gets cast. It's a really, really nasty spell. Um, the, uh, what are these guys called? Living Mercury are also quite brutal as well. So we actually lose quite a few units in this battle. Um, in fact, quite a few is an understatement. We lose our army, pretty much. Uh, so it's a really, really bad fight for us. These Living Mercuries take so long to kill as well. There was another magma eruption you just saw. It's a huge amount of damage. So yeah, that was a difficult fight. Um, so as you can see, we lost all of our Numidian warriors. And some of our Furbog warriors as well. <laughs> um, lost one Furbog druid, he lost two Jade Sorceresses. Um, I think it's easier for him to replace his units than it is for us to replace ours though. It's certainly easier for him to get them to the fight because he can just, I think just, uh, I think he just summons them in Haunted Woods. Whereas we have to march on the Median Warriors all the way down from uh, from Moria. So, you know, even on the face of it, that's a bad result. But it's an even worse result when you consider how easy it is for him to reinforce versus how difficult it is for me to reinforce. So that is probably the 
second worst fight we've had. I still maintain that the worst fight was that stupid fucking AI statue, but never mind. Battle in Willard. Uh, this was just drilling. Effortlessly taking a province on his own. Why not show it off, eh? Isn't drilling fantastic? This is almost a tricky fight, actually. He prevails long enough to uh, to get one final cast of Horde of Skeletons off, which finishes off the Living Mercury. Um, and finally, about Linfera, what was this one? Oh, right, okay. So, last turn I mentioned that the Grey Knights are impossible to actually catch if they're stealthing around. Um, turns out he's not stealthing it around though, he just li he literally just attacked the province. And I guess it was another coin flip situation. Um, so my solo sorceress, who I thought was just going to fight province defense, ended up fighting the Grey Knights. Um, and it did not go well, at all. So, the Grey Knights get all the way up to her in like one turn, which is also really difficult to deal with. Uh, and then they just easily chew through the skeletons. Um, yeah. So that wasn't great for us either. So a pretty bad turn overall. As for events, uh, an ill omen in Black Forest. Minus 276 gold in Enidra. And minus 3 dominion in the Woods of Weeping. So yeah, bad turn all around. Really bad luck. Okay, so what are we doing this turn? Well, I'm finally moving the, uh, the handful of Furbogs from Cuneral, led by Ladar. Um, because there are no units in Cormark anymore, so I'm not anticipating an immediate siege by uh, Tina Nog. And uh, obviously we just lost a huge number of units, so we need to replace them any way we can. Um, we are amassing another nice little squad of um, units in Fomoria though. So in Ashington I'm recruiting another default commander, so he can start leading those. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to bring down another um, 70 or so units. Plus the guys in the Caves of Madness. So that gives us a nice 140-ish units, maybe? I can't remember how many are here. Oh, only 30... Oh, 40. Okay. It's fair. So about 110 units altogether. Plus, I'm also having Precision Excision... Uh, precision Excision. I'm having a lot of difficulty speaking today. Uh, cast some more Summon Great Eagles. Uh, reason for that is just because they're Great Sieges. So we might be nice to have some for the Siege of Elmore. Um... This commander, I don't know where he came from, but he's heading over towards Fomori as well to help lead future troops. And uh, Nurse is just sneaking around to keep sight searching. Down here, it's still just a case of consolidating units. Um, you can see I'm moving my Pretender into Mammoth Grove here. Uh, I might as well try to stop him recruiting these Lizard Shaman. Um, and in Osandius and Wellard, I'm just defending. Uh, I'm actually searching for sites, which is kind of a it's kind of silly to search for sites on border provinces because they might just flip and give your opponent gem income, but um, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, these mages are just going to sit in these two provinces and defend. Because um, whatever he brings out of Haunted Woods, if he moves from Haunted Woods to Asanius, I get first turn because I'll be defending. So I can cast flight with all my mages. Uh, and there are no units here, so it's not like I'm going to use units to Earthquake either. Uh, and we can just skelly spam. Anything that's there, I think, will will fall to skeleton spam. Because it doesn't look like there's any um, living mercuries or f flame children or anything like that. It's just ancient ones and earth readers. So, these guys are defending these two provinces. Everything else is moving backwards. Um, trying to consolidate. We need to build up our forces in this area. I think the forces we build in Black Forest and Micklin are mainly just going to be defending. Uh, whereas the forces over here are going to be on the offensive, if you know what I mean. Uh, only other movement of interest is that we're moving units from Belmont and Noria to the Rusty Badlands. Um, this is just in case he tries to attack the Rusty Badlands again with the Grey Knights, because this time, you know, this time we'll have a proper defense ready for him. And I think we should be able to, we should be able to beat them with all of this. Surely. The Grey Knights are pretty tough, but they're not that tough, come on. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, and in Micklin, of course, we're also summoning some more Morrigans. Um, and that's it for this turn. I hope that's enough detail. I, I'm still feeling really, really ill. Um, so I, I'm a bit low energy at the moment. But um, I, th I think I've covered it in enough detail what we're doing. Pretenders moving down to Mammoth Grove. These two provinces have just been defended. This province is being defended. Everything else is just consolidating. And in terms of research, I've showed that off as well. Um, let me just double check that I've put province defense in all my provinces, which I have, so that's great. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end turn. One commander is not moving. Who's that? Let's see. This guy, Baylor. Uh, he can hang around to lead Furborg warriors as I recruit those guys. So that's good for this turn. And uh, I'll see you on turn 39. Alright, hello. Turn 39. Uh, someone claimed the throne of Gaia. Let's just remind ourselves what that does. Throne. Uh, so that's Saramatia. Dominion gets growth plus two, produces two nature gems per, per turn. That's a nice little throne. Uh, okay, we cast Summon Morrigans four times, and Summon Great Eagles once, uh, and then Summon Morrigan again. Uh, we searched for sites a lot, and we actually found one as well in Asandius. We found Sparkling Fields, so that's an additional Ur gem for us per turn, making it up to plus 12 per turn. So we are swimming in Ur gems, or floating rather, I don't know. Um, yeah, but that is of course adjacent to Haunted Woods, so whether or not we're able to retain that um, site for the immediate future is uncertain, but uh, we'll try to. Um, proclamation from Lilia. He has declared a new prophet. Alright, good to know. Uh, and then we were actually attacked twice by Agartha in both of the provinces that I defended. So, Wellard was the one that Drilling was defending, and Asandius was the one that all of these units were defending. Uh, so let's take a look at them in turn. Some interesting stuff here. Um, so first of all, this is the one that Drilling was defending. Uh, where is he? He's back here. Good old Drilling. Um, lots of water elemental, as you can see. These guys have, um, they're all equipped with bottles of living water. Which, uh, summons a water elemental at the beginning of the fight. Which is... Actually pretty cool, that's a really cool item. Uh, and two Jade Sorceresses. Oh, another two Jade Sorceresses as well. Uh, these Jade Sorceresses ca cast um, Frozen Heart, I think it's called. Quite a lot in the fight. Uh, so that's something to be cautious of. Cause I, I think Frozen Heart is an instant death spell, so... Yeah. Anyway. The Water Elemental's charge forward, but Drilling pumps out just enough uh, skeletons to deal with them. Uh, and to take the blade winds and the magma eruptions and everything else. And the banishments. Yeah. So pretty straightforward. And then the mages route. Uh, so that was Willard. We actually killed one of the jade sorceresses, so that's pretty nice. Uh, Battle in Mammoth Grove. This was our um, pretender, of course, taking Mammoth Grove from... Uh, Okay, well there were some mages there, so let's, let's watch it. We killed an engraver in this fight as well. I uh, can't remember when the last time was that we saw our pretender fighting. But uh, pretty usual stuff. I noticed that he is actually accruing fatigue now, uh, which I guess is because of the heat in this province. It's heat 3 currently, which I, I think fatigues you more when doing combat. Um, almost caught that guy at the end. <laughs> The Shaman. Uh, we killed an engraver. And then in Osandius, he hit us with quite a lot of stuff. Um, but fortunately we were defending, which means we all cast Flight on turn 1. Uh, which means the Earthquake doesn't really do much to us. I'm pretty sure there's an Earthquake anyway. Alright, maybe there wasn't an Earthquake. Maybe I'm a liar. <laughs> Uh, but lots of magma eruptions. Lots of magma eruptions. That's a really powerful spell. 
I mean, look at that. Jesus. I wonder how accurate that spell is. Alright. Um, yeah, so we had three fights, we won them all. It's quite good for us. So, this area is still under our control, uh, including the new province that we just took. Uh, unexpected event in Marverni. Taxes have been raised. Uh, and defense was raised, so that's nice. Uh, unexpected event in Miklum. So both capitals got uh, unexpected events. Three units have been cursed and we found three nature gems. And then unexpected event in Gaeta. Uh, people have tired of your oppressive rule and we just lost the province. So that's not very nice. Uh, and a worldwide event has occurred. The throne of Gaia is spreading its influence, awakening forces slumbering under rock and root. Worldwide growth plus one. So that's really nice. Um, Okay, so what's happening this turn? Well, we're going to have a lot of units in um, Fomoria next turn. This commander is bringing all these fur bogs down, and in Fomoria currently there are 58 units in the garrison. Lots of Nemedian warriors, lots of uh, great eagles. So we'll have to uh, think about leading those out, because I think we've got enough to form a second little uh, force. Uh, this commander is still heading over to Fomoria as well for leading future troops. Uh, Jawbreaker's army in the Searing Sands is heading to uh, Waka. We'll attack that. There's one engraver defending this province. I don't know, he might be set up to do something sinister. He might be uh, going to cast Earthquake on turn one or something, but... Uh, yeah, we'll take a chance anyway. Uh, at worst we lose a few warriors. Um, no, actually at worst we lose the commanders on turn one and then the whole army routes. But, in spite of that, I think we should attack it. Um, maybe. Oh, I'm having second thoughts now. No, let's just attack it. What what harm can an engraver do, right? What harm? Um, still consolidating troops in Black Forest. Uh, we're summoning some more Morrigans in this province as well, and some more Great Eagles. So, there's a few um, Furbogs here currently. A uh, few, few units here to be picked up, you can see. A couple more here to be picked up. And uh, these guys are heading home as well. So there's about 50 units in this province, I think, and we are recruiting every turn as well. So we should have another uh, little army in Black Forest in a couple of turns as well. The mages in the Rusty Badlands are going to retake Pharaoh. That's these guys. Um, no troops, unfortunately, but we do have Baller with us. And uh, he's pretty tough, as we all know. Uh, once they've taken Pharaoh, I guess they can try and take Gaeta back from the neutrals as well. And down in Miklan, we're also, we have some more units here to take back to Miklan, and in Miklan, we're up to 40 troops here as well, including some Morrigans that we summoned uh, this turn. So we'll start leading some troops down. I, I think, again, mainly we're just going to concentrate on defending these provinces um, for the time being, not attacking Haunted Woods yet. We'll, we'll focus on attacking Irma, uh, Irmor next with the units in Black Forest and Fomoria, and the Jawbreaker's army in Searing Sands. Uh, and that'll be our focus for the immediate future. It gives us a, a few turns to uh, do some research, catch up on that, maybe forge some items as well. There are two f items I am currently forging. One is a winged helmet, which I'll... How can I show that off? This way, okay. I'm forging a winged helmet, which is... Uh, this boosts your Ur magic skill by one. It costs 20 Ur gems, but we do have quite a lot of Ur gem income currently. Uh, and I'm also forging a Skull Staff, which is a death booster. Uh, much cheaper item, but it's a two-handed staff. Um, so those two items are being forged this turn. Uh, and in terms of research, we're up to 736 per turn currently, so that's not too bad. Still aiming for um, mass flight, which I think will be useful to deal with the uh, earthquakes, but I'm not sure what we can do about those um, magma eruptions. I guess just laying down storm and mist, maybe, to you know, diminish his precision. It's the only thing I can think of. Um, yeah, and that's it for this turn, actually. That's the only province we're attacking. We're still just defending in these two provinces, and I'm moving my pretender back to the green sink as well. Um, I'll focus on defending the line here for the time being. No idea where the Grey Knights have gone. They've uh, stealthed off, unfortunately. Um, so that's this turn. 
And I think that's everything, yeah. So I'll end turn. Uh, 27 commanders doing nothing. Well, that's most of that is scouts. You can see I've got scouts in these provinces here, this province, this province. All of these provinces all have scouts. So we have nice um, scouting reports for almost all of Agartha's um, provinces. At least almost all of the provinces that we can actually attack. Um, yeah. But we'll end turn. And uh, we'll see what happens next turn, and hopefully that engraver doesn't uh, doesn't wipe that army somehow. But you never know. Hello, turn forty, end of the video, and I'm feeling a lot better today as well. So that's good. Um, lots of things to get through, as you can see. Really, really strange turn. Um, messenger from Saramatu first says so he's heading towards Agartha now. Two more turns, and he can attack. So, we'll take his word for it, why not? Let's assume that that's true. Uh, I don't have scouts down here anymore, so I can't actually see what's happening. Uh, all my scouts are in this area now. But, uh, two turns, okay. Sure. Uh, research and enchantment completed. What does that give us? Uh, Arafend, cool. Dome of Solid- I've never actually used one of the domes before. Um, 20 ur gems to block one spell just seems a bit, I don't know. A bit expensive. Uh, enlivened statues. Might try that. We don't have many uses for earth, um, earth gems. Uh, what else is there? Ziz. I looked at what these guys were. These these are like those great eagles that I've been summoning, but undead. Uh, they look really sick, but um, it's hard to justify spending death gems on anything other than morrigans at this point. Uh, and rigor mortis and relief are very popular spells, but uh, I can't cast relief. Rigor mortis we might cast at some point. Uh, I don't see why not. Okay. Uh, we summon Morrigans, we summon Eagles, we summon Morrigans. Uh, and we took control of Ferra. That was this province that the Grey Knights took. No resistance. So we can head on to uh, Gaeta with that little army. Uh, we witnessed a battle in Behemoth's Rest, which was uh, just as well, we're taking back a province from a Windmaster. I don't know what that's about. Uh, and also there was a battle in Wacker. Which was just my, uh, the jawbreaker, of course. So he took the province adjacent to Amor's capital. Uh, and as you can see, I'm moving out to the Cursed Land next. Okay, then there's a lot of weird stuff happening. Unexpected event in Stinging Swamp. Fertility Festival, growth plus two, that's nice. Caves of Madness, same festival, also nice. Uh, Muspel. The forces that sleep deep in the earth have awakened the, to the call of the throne of Gaia. So this is yet another throne that causes random attacks on your um, nation. Which is not pleasant. Same event in Red Waste. Same event in Springs Fires. Um, an ill omen in Glistening Dew Forest. And in Validin, we also got attacked by Etans, which is totally unrelated to the throne. That's just... They just threw that in as a little extra. Um, so all these fights you can see here, these were uh, being attacked by Earth Gnomes, we, we repelled them there. Valadun, the Etins, we repelled those guys. Red Wastes, the Gnomes beat us. Uh, and that was the province that had my Furbolg champion in it that was moving from uh, Malverni's territory over towards my cap, so that's kind of annoying. Uh, and Spring, Fire, uh, Spring Spires, same deal. So let's watch this one just to see what these units are. Um, Earth Elementals we've seen before. Agartha has lots of these guys. Gnomes! Well, Earth Gnomes specifically. Just uh, kind of like... similar sort of things, really. Um, <laughs> they're not the most interesting units in the world. Um, we almost beat them in, in almost every province, but unfortunately... The provinces that have like three PD just lose. Uh, we discover a scout. And one of our sorceresses died from a disease. Okay, so you can see the crossed swords on the map are where we got attacked. Valadin, Spring Spires, Red Waste, Muspel. Uh, they took two of them, so we're going to have to take those back. Okay, so what's happening this turn? Down here, still just defending, and lots of scouts moving around as you can see. Lots of scouts all over this area. Um, there's a few little things happening in lots of different places, so this might be hard to talk about. But the army in Wacker, that's the Jawbreaker, is heading to Cursed Land, and he's leaving behind Baton to uh, defend. Um, and my armies, as you can see, are also moving out now. So all these troops are moving out from Fomoria. And all of these troops here are moving out from uh, this side of the map. 
So those armies are going to take four turns to get two armor, unfortunately. One turn, two, three, four. Uh, same for this one. One, two, three, four. Not much I can do about that, unfortunately. It means it might take a while before we can actually see Germal. So in the meantime, we need to take all these provinces around Ermo. So we're doing that next turn, or this turn, depending on how you want to <laughs> look at it. Um, Jawbreaker's army is taking Cursed Land, and then all of these provinces, Tricia, Anvas, Waywoods, Ashland, and Wickerwoods, um, they all have very low province defense scores. You can see the scout report says one officer and a few loyal henchmen. So all of these provinces are being attacked by sorceresses this turn. Um, they're all in different places, unfortunately. Here's one. Uh, Magnificent Smiles attacking Ashlands. Uh, profuse Bleedings attacking wayward, uh, Waywoods. And so on. But all, all six of these provinces are being attacked by sorceresses this turn. Uh, they're all scripted the same way. It's all just Mist Form and then Horde of Skeletons. And I think we should take them all. Uh, and that should be a pretty big income swing if we manage to take them all. Um... I'm also cloud trapezing in medical ethics to Wacker. So that's a safe province, I think. He might roll out some units to attack it, and that's okay. Baton's going to be there, and medical ethics is going to be there. Medical ethics is also carrying 30 air gems. Because what I think we can do on the turn after that is move all, all of our mages from these provinces and the little army, move them all onto Ermor, and then I'll give out some gems. Uh, and I think they'll actually be quite an intimidating force at that point. They won't break the fort, the fort very quickly, of course, because there aren't many units. But I think he might have to think twice about breaking siege into a bunch of air elementals, because I can summon a lot of air elementals with all those air gems. So that's all of the units that are um, going to be in this area next turn. Uh, and hopefully that all goes well. As I said, the conventional armies over here are, are moving out. Uh, I'm bringing lots of Furbolg Druids. Uh, lots of units, as you can see. Um, and I already mentioned that the uh, these guys are heading to Great Inex to take that. We don't know where the Grey Knights are, they are now in stealth mode, so no idea. Um, I don't know how to catch those guys at all, unfortunately. Um, and I think that's everything for this turn. There's nothing else interesting going on. Um, I'll show off the um, helmet that I just forged. So this gets Precision Excision up to uh, Air 5, which is pretty amazing. She's like the best Air Mage that we have by far. And I noticed that Air 5 gives us this really cool spell that I noticed. Air 5, Wind Ride. So it says you cast this spell and it picks up commanders and just dumps them in whatever province you're in. I tried this out in a test game to see how, how it works exactly. And basically you cast it on a province if it picks up an enemy commander, it drops them in the province you're in, so they just have to fight all the province defense in your province and whatever units are patrolling. So this is a really interesting spell because I was wondering how I'm ever going to siege Haunted Woods because if I bring a huge army to a siege Haunted Woods and then I storm the fort, he can just have all the, the um, what are they called, let's see, uh, oracles. He can just have all the oracles just spam Earthquake every turn, and it'll just, like, be really, really tough to deal with. Um, so I can cast Mass Flight on turn one, of course, but when I'm attacking, he gets to move first. So if he, if he has a lot of mages, this will be especially true when attacking Agatha. If he has a lot of mages, um, that's a ton of Earthquakes he could potentially get off on the first turn. Which is really annoying. But what would be really funny is if every turn prior to the siege, I'm just scooping up commanders and fighting them in my <laughs> in Micklin or something like that, versus all the province defense and whatever units I have patrolling. That would be like a great way to slowly whittle down the number of commanders he has. So I'll just bring that up again so you can read it. Um, it's The unfortunate thing is the ranges are only three provinces, but um, I don't know, we'll test it out. It says it might struggle to pick up large units, and I think Agatha's mages are size three or four or something. So that might be quite difficult, but I think it's worth a shot because it sounds really funny. Um, but that's it for this turn. Research is continuing apace. Um, next turn should be quite interesting. We'll see if we can capture all these provinces or not. Um, he could move out these mages into one of these province into one of these two provinces to try and defend it, and that might be quite interesting to see how how that works out. But um, yeah. 
I guess I should send a message to um, Saramatia though. So I can't remember what he said exactly. He's going to attack in two turns. Um, best of luck. Alright, we'll say that. Uh, it might actually have been better for him to attack um, Zabelba, to be honest. But um, I guess we'll just leave it there. So, um, at some point, I'd quite like to retake the whole because it is an 80 income province, but um, I'm not sure what to do about that. Oh, the one other thing I forgot to mention is that we are taking these two provinces as well next turn. Um, one of my sorceresses is moving out, as you can see. Um, and in this place, uh, there's no one adjacent, so I had to have a nurse cast a uh, cloud piece. So she's attacking spring spires. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll have eight fight next fights next turn. That's quite cool. Um, hopefully we win them all, and hopefully we don't get attacked by any more um, throne of Gaia events because that is really annoying. So thanks for watching anyway, and I'll see you in the next video on turn forty-one.